Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. It is my second video of the day. This is a rarity. It's I'm very excited about it. Um, I'm glad to be here with you. Thanks for checking out my other videos that are like just kind of floating around out there right now. I did a video yesterday on tithing. Today I answered a bunch of questions and I'm really excited about it, about what's happening over there and the... Um, you know what we're talking about it's actually something really important I think I've struck a nerve I've hit a chord I've opened up the conversation for a lot of people and it's going really great so thanks for watching my videos I appreciate it you're incredible I came on today just because I'm like oh uh, the article came out that I interviewed for um, in the New Yorker which is or the New York magazine for the cut I guess it's like a sub cut and I read I read through the article and, uh, you know, she, I, I had spoken to this reporter, her name was Caitlin, what's her name? Caitlin Moscatello. And I'd spoke to her, I've never spoken to a, a large publication before, I've never done anything like that. I think that uh, they also interviewed uh, KDU without a crystal ball, and I think she's been interviewed before, she's been in journalism or something that somebody was saying. And uh, they represented her pretty well. Um, the one thing, you know, I'm going to get out of the way, it's... It's definitely a decent article. Like I really enjoyed it. They covered it well. They were pretty balanced and fair. They, they did their fact checking. I remember being on the phone with this reporter for over an hour. She's asking me tons of questions about my story and about what I'm doing, why I'm doing this, and um, I, I made it really, really clear to her the reason that well I do this. And you know, there are some people out there throwing out throwing out the shade about like, oh, you're just doing it for making money. It's the next big outrage and blah, 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 blah. But I mean, I, I don't know how else to prove it to you that it wasn't monetized when this happened. This wasn't something that I expected to happen from this. And I was genuinely outraged because I'm an adoptive dad and the Micah and James story has me still pissed to this day. And I'm going to do another video on it and I will do another one and another one and another one. I will not let them get away. And I will always keep this at the forefront. There's 5,500 people on a Facebook group that are just passionate about this. I'm with them in this. I'm not going to let it go. There's still much to uncover. But the um, the the last bit of the article, I was looking for if she says anything about me. And she says this, she says, Paulson, like other YouTubers I spoke with, thinks Micah has a shot at the second chance as an influencer. Maybe I said something like, well, you know, the, the internet is short memory. And if people just are quiet about it, then they could probably quietly come back. I did. I did say that. And so that's why we can't be quiet about it. Right. Support can be quiet. She says, Micah still has over 600,000 subscribers. Could she come back? Yes. hundred percent. Would she have people that would still support her? Yes. hundred percent. Would her backlash be ridiculous? A million percent. She would have to decide for herself. Am I willing to face criticism? And being Micah and a narcissist to the nth degree, I doubt it, right? And so for now, she, this is what she writes about me. This is my big shining moment in The New Yorker. Uh, for now, Micah and James remain quiet, perhaps sensing what any good YouTuber knows. The outrage can be lucrative online, but it also moves quickly towards other targets. By late July, as I interviewed several YouTubers about the Stoffers, another scandal had already taken hold. This time about teen influencer Daniel Cohn. So this, I talked to her about this and this is my quote and she didn't quote me. She didn't put my name there, which is fine. Whatever. She says, if you're willing to go down the Daniel Cohn wormhole, it's crazy. One of them told me then as we got off the phone, he went down to make a video about it. And she's right. Cause the Daniel Cohn story has me outraged almost as much as the Mike and James story because this woman taking advantage of her kids. And so, yeah, like, I guess I wonder now that I'm kind of, now I'm going to be kind of weary about ever speaking to reporters because like I basically poured it out for her and I was, I was basically honest, like the way I'm talking to you now, I told her my story and she seemed empathetic and she's like, yeah, she agreed with me. She laughed with me. I just, I, I get to the, I get to the realization that M, MSM mainstream media just wants to paint a picture that they want to paint. And the paint, the picture they painted of me was just, I was onto the next thing when this, you guys all know this isn't true. And I've gotten some, I always get some fly. I always get flack for people saying, why do you keep talking about it? And so that's what I don't, I don't really appreciate that. And I, I did tweet at, I did tweet at Moscatello or whatever her name is, Moscatello. She didn't tweet back at me, but I just said, Hey, you know, of the whole conversation we had, how did you pull this from that? And I guess you could, I mean, it, to be fair, she, she might've been looking for that to say that, uh, you know, outrage can be lucrative online and all that stuff. And so just, they're always going to move towards other targets and all that stuff. But again, guys, let me tell you, I'm not a T channel. Okay. And you can say it all you want. I'm not a T channel. I don't do gossip. I don't cover just the next big thing and the other next big thing that everybody else is doing. Like I just, I feel like I have commentary to talk about things and maybe it's low level T I suppose, but it's my commentary on social issues. And I continue to say that maybe that is T I don't know. I mean, if I'm going to be accused of it and just keep going down that path, maybe I should just go full blast. But I just don't think that's what you guys want. I think you guys appreciate the way that I 
react to things, the way that I talk about things and the way that I, I bring it to your attention. And I, I've been told time and time and time and time again in the comments multiple times, I say what you're thinking. You're, like some of you are saying it's uncanny about how your the facial expressions and things that I give you are you're just it's exactly what you're thinking and exactly how you're feeling and so I'm happy to be that voice there this article otherwise was really really good she goes on to say a bunch of she she covers it really really well the fact checkers at New York at uh, New York New Yorker they they called me they emailed me like five times to fact check all, everything in order to put nothing in the story so she goes through a whole channel about Everything and I, I, I really feel like this person and her team watched all of the videos online that cover this, including mine. Overall, this thing, the one thing that kind of pops out to me is that that Mike and James are willing to use anything, anything, for views. You know, clips titled "My Miscarriage," "Story at Six Weeks Pregnant," "Live Pregnancy Test," "Am I Pregnant?" These things that she was really worried about. And I am today. I want to cover a video or a series of videos where. Um, She's talking about these cancer scares. And from a from a guy who's like mom died of cancer, like cancer is in my family a lot. In my wife's family, cancer is very, very it's close to home. And I want to preface this by saying that I don't think that it is fake. Now I also want to preface it by saying I don't think it, I would put it past them to do something like that because I do truly honestly believe that they wanted to adopt from China a kid with issues because it would get them views and they did it because it would get them get the kids faster and they started talking about it even in the article it says adoptive parents aren't supposed to talk about this before the kid gets in your house at all and they were did 20 videos before the kid even got there and so they did a whole bunch of dirty on this whole thing so I wouldn't put it past her to talk about the stuff but they apps regardless of I think whether or not she's faking this or not I do think she was worried because it looked genuine in the video but they definitely milked it for three videos and it got them a lot of play so I want to walk through those videos real quick with you guys and I'm not going to play the entire things because there's just three of them right but I definitely want to talk about uh what she was the first one I think it's this one let's see one so this is the first one I kind of got on Billy Billy and shout out to wander without intent because she's been helping me with this she's been doing a ton of research for me finding these videos and just we've been chatting and trying to figure out how to cover these things so shout out to wander go follow her on, on YouTube and stuff she's been awesome and we're, we're making a good team so let's go through the intro of this video this is really interesting to me it's been a tough day for I'm walking. And then it's like the saddest thing and then they play this dumb song. She's genuinely heartbroken here. So, so like I do believe honestly here that she absolutely had a lump or lymph node or whatever she's calling it here. But I want to walk through a little bit of this and react to it and then go to the last video where they actually are like, oh yeah, it's nothing. But I wanted to get five doctors to tell me that it was nothing. And they're just milking it for every moment. And it's kind of as a slap in the face to people who actually struggle with this because yeah, sure, have a video if you're scared about it. Talk about the reality of it. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay? Talk about it because that's sure. That makes a lot of people feel good or supported or that someone's along with them. But don't milk it. This is something you don't milk. You guys have always asked like why Micah goes to doctors so much. There's just kind of a few things that we're working on that I'll let her talk to you more about. But um, there's some scary stuff we're kind of working through right now medically. So the one thing I see here that really gets me is that he doesn't seem too scared. He seems like, ah, we're just going through some stuff and trying to just play it down. I don't know if that's his, his shtick or his character that he plays on this whole channel, but it just seems like, ah, we're going through some stuff. He almost seems like he knows the end result here, that they're just going through the motions. It's been a tough day for many reasons besides just being on a road trip, but let's go get some juice, guys, and we'll uh, continue this trip before we have to drop our beautiful little girl off. We've been having a hard day with that, too. Oh, baby, it's okay. I'm sorry, I don't want to make you cry. It's okay. She's sad, she doesn't want to go, guys. I don't blame her. That was definitely some shade thrown at Kova's dad. This kid is struggling, and this is a, a higher narrative here too about like the, the, the dangers of two families and all this stuff and making choices uh, that that are hard for kids for this reason. That's heartbreaking for this kid, and he's like, I don't blame you, you don't want... He just said that in front of her. Um, and she hears that. She's not stupid. She hears him saying that type of thing that he's throwing shade at Kova's dad. Uh, that shouldn't be missed. That was douchebagness to do that. 
they're going to drop her off to spend the summer with her father and he just said something totally dirtbaggish. I don't like that at all. Now I'm not saying that Cove's dad might be a shining pillar of, of, of goodness either, I don't know, but some grossness here. Do you guys want to get a juice or do you want to get a smoothie bowl or something? Ooh, they have noodles too. This was, I think this was their phase where they're going for veganism. <laughs> that lasted like a year because the algorithm worked for a bit for it. I wish my kids would eat good stuff like this though. I'm kind of jealous because my kids literally only eat macaroni and cheese and raw hot dogs. Mike is playing that character here. Where she's like, oh, the camera's there, and she's just playing the... This is a narcissistic tendency, I think, where it's like, uh, is anybody paying attention to me? I'm looking around, make sure people are paying attention. I, sh I should leave, I should make this motion to move, to do something, so that people will be like, oh, what's going on with her? Oh, what's... what's happening? This is a, this is a move that narcissists use a lot. Guys, I have been a big wreck today. This ring. It's just me. It's it's incredibly. She's so incredibly talented at showing off this ring. It's amazing her movements. Incredible. It's been really scary. Um, a couple of months ago, I found like a crazy big lymph node in my side of my neck, and it's kind of just been growing. I've been going to doctors, and they're like, "It's nothing. It's nothing," and it won't stop growing. I. I want to. I want to make sure that you guys hear this. Okay. If you have an issue like this that is actually really scary, and it is, okay, let's not diminish that it's scary. Can you please just not have this conversation in front of your children? Do you know how scary this would be for your kids? Like, there is a time and a place, for sure, if there's something wrong, something happening, to talk to your kids. But in front of a camera, in front of the world, if your kids are listening to this, this is scary stuff. These kids will not forget these things. This is absolutely scary. Like, having trouble keeping food down, and having shortness of breath and lots of like scary stuff. She's pushing this thing here. She's pushing these are real tears, but she's pushing this because we all know in the end that this is nothing. The doctors say it's nothing. So something is it like all mental in her head? Is this a narcissistic tendency as well? Is that I need to manufacture some things so that I'm the center of attention? I don't know. This video is hard to, to dissect because I do truly think that she was worried. And I'm the kind of guy that worries about that stuff. I found a lump in my neck, oh my gosh, when people sleep for weeks. That's the type of guy I am. So I get it. But at the same time, like I can't, we can't forget the milk factor for the three videos I made of this. went to the ear nose and throat just to like check the lymph node to see if it wasn't anything much and he said he's like it's either nothing or it could be lymphoma I'm not sure a doctor just says it could be nothing or it could be literally cancer that could kill you I don't think that's a conversation I could be wrong leave a comment below maybe like, I'm not sure. I, I think a doctor, when I went with my mom, when she was diagnosed with lung cancer and she was checking in on the brain cancer situation, um, they thought it had spread to her brain. The doctor was very, very different about the way he spoke to her like that. He didn't want to give her a definitive diagnosis or scare her, so he didn't say anything. He just said, when we get back, we'll have definitive tests. We'll let you know. Here's what it, you know, here's the worst case scenario. Here's the best case scenario. Maybe that's what he said here. It could be nothing or it could be worst case scenario. It's this. But I'm not sure a pre preliminary test a doctor would just yell that out and say, yeah, it's probably cancer or it could not be anything. It doesn't sound like a doctor to me would say that. I'm so scared. I don't even want to talk about this. Like, I don't even want to publicize this possibility, but I've been so scared the last couple of weeks. And... Don't publicize it, but we're publicizing it. I do. It's just about, it's, there it is, it's the hypocrisy of it all. I don't even want to publicize this. There's a camera in your face. If my wife is breaking down like this, let's not forget that James is her husband sitting right next to her, holding a camera. There's no hand on her shoulder. There's no, like, let's turn this off and get a hug in here. Let's turn this off and let, you know, let's chill. He's capturing every sort of detail here. And that is on purpose. Don't forget it. Could you not cut that part? You cut everything else. Well, I don't want to be there. I don't want to be To be a boo boo's bed. To be mom. I'm sad. Oh, yeah, I'm a little sad. 
Again, the kids are there listening. Are you sad? Are you sad? Are you sad? I want to be there to make boobies, but I want to be there to be mom. And like, I, I, I get, and again, I'm not saying that she's not genuine here. I'm just saying time and a place folks and like just camera in your face at all moments i get you're gonna you know the click value you're gonna get out of this for sure i do get that uh, I, it just seems a little bit contrived and a little bit milked it's daddy. i don't want to deal with anything scary right now no? Oh and I try to eat so clean and I eat all this fruit and I'm questioning a lot of the things that I've done. Why is this happening? You're sad? You're sad? She's saying it right here as if she's like, she's done. Like, I, I, again, I'm the same type of guy. If I found something like that, I'd be like, oh my gosh, worst case scenario in my brain. I just feel like th he's sitting there with the camera. We can't forget James is sitting right there. What kind of husband lets his wife just kind of like fall apart and not do anything about it? But deep down in my gut, I think it's a little bit more concerning. And we, again, we know that it did, it's not concerning. We know that in the end, it wasn't anything. So her gut doesn't work. I just wanted to say this because, like, I don't know how much longer I can hide, hide him. What? Say what? And so that's kind of what's been going on. She's saying, I don't know how long I can hide this. Why are you hiding? Again, this is a, this goes back to the whole family vlogging thing. You're going to put your world out there. You're going to cry on a camera. What are you trying to hide? Why would you hide this? <laughs> this isn't, this is something a lot of people go through. This is a human aspect that people would be like, okay, which is what they are milking, by the way. I'm just saying, like, I feel like they really are overdoing this a bit. For sure. I've been terrified. My lip nose will stop growing. <sighs> I've been super dizzy, and I've not felt the best, and I'm just not doing that good, guys. Not for a while, alright? You vlog the rest. So she's done, then James puts the camera on himself, and he's like, here's my tire, here's my tears. Again, I just, I, I, as a human, it's really hard for me to, to, ha to picture the scene of him holding a camera right in front of his face like this, probably this close and he's crying and he's like I, I gotta cry in front of this camera like it just it, it, it takes it just feels wrong right your gut tells you that there's just there's too much here that's just like eh. and again she's bawling her eyes out and he doesn't do anything all of a sudden it goes over to him he's crying and these kids are in the car with them <laughs> something tells me this is a lot to do with Kova going to her dad's house um, and everybody's just this happens every year and this is probably super like emotional for all of them and they're just capitalizing on all these huge major emotions around them and using different things to get to talk about it right we just something tells me that this is all a big ball of emotions in here and this is all setting off each other so that's that's what i'm seeing Mom hug you, Mom. Mom hug you. <laughs> she just like looked at him looked at the camera then broke down i, I can't get around this guys it bugs me a little bit <laughs> And the kids are back there. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? You're not trying to scare the kids, but you're literally saying things because we know the outcome here. You didn't obviously at the time, or I don't know. We know the outcome, right? In the end, you're not trying to scare the kids. Why don't you just wait till you know? Like, that is a form of, like, psychological horror for kids, okay? Just wait till you know. Stop. This is Micah's whole MO. To make all these crazy decisions and say all these crazy things... And, and, and to not even think about it first. This is the problem here, guys. And your kids are going to never forget this. So then let's go right to the end video. So she gets this other video, and it's the last one. I'll skip the other one because it's just, I don't know, like it's too much to cover.
tubes. I think we should talk about that channel that I was gonna get. And I had a second opinion on my lip node. So now all the giveaway winners. Had a second opinion on my cancer, and let's get your giveaways. Okay, I'm just gonna skip forward to this to the other part. So guys, I got back from my appointment. I had a second opinion on my lymph node, and then I also got a bunch of cavities filled. So I have no more cavities in my teeth. My teeth look good, but the best part about the second opinion is I went to one of. What is there like a clinic in the U.S. where you can get your teeth done and get second opinions on cancer? Am I? That's convenient. And the last day ENT was very confident that it was nothing. I went and saw um, this ENT that, like I said, a lot of people had recommended to me, and he was 100% confident that it was absolutely nothing where it presents, the way it looked, what it was. He actually said, um, I don't understand too much of it, so I don't want to talk and sound like a ding-dong. Uh, but he pretty much said it's kind of just part of my spinal neck anatomy. That's not actually a lymph node. I did have a couple of primary care doctors. Anyway, whatever. So basically, it all comes to the head at this third video where they're probably just milked this thing. And the thing that bothers me most about this is that it, she clearly had to, our doctors already telling her, multiple doctors, even before the first video, it's probably nothing. It sounded like it was just an attachment of her spine, she said, or something. She didn't know what to say. And the doctor's like, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. She went to five doctors, it's not, it's not, it's not. And they milked this thing. And so to me, this is one more, one more thing that just screams proof of, of the narcissism and, and the, the absolute exploitation of everything they can exploit for views on this channel. Like the pregnancies and the uh, six week, like I don't know, she just keeps going into all that. The article covers a lot about it. Check the article out if you want to. Um, there's just tons in there too. Today's video is just more of just like a, just an icky like, if people couldn't see this at that point, I mean, it's almost a hard one to dissect because I do genuinely believe, feel that she would have an issue. She's crying her eyes out. Those real tears, not like the fake tears when she's on the bed with James talking about H and rehoming him. But like for this, I just felt like three videos, a little bit much uh, about this one thing that you already had a diagnosis of from multiple doctors. And so this bugs me a bit. Uh, it's not the worst of them all. I don't think it's pretty bad. Although if people who struggle with these types of issues, cancer and um, all that stuff who've had it in their family, it kind of just is like a exploitation of it. And so it does feel a little bit icky. But yeah, I don't know. This is this has kind of been one of those weird videos that you you don't know what to think, but it just doesn't get any better. There's no redeeming qualities again. And James, the whole thing talking in front of your kids and the issues about like being a husband and not really just again, if your wife is broken down like that, like the first thing you're going to do is like, let's get a hug in here. Let's get it. Let's get one of these. Okay. And I just feel like they have this disconnect. The, the more I see of their videos and I don't watch a lot of them, I only watch the ones that I think people want me to react to. I feel like they're just they're their whole life is lived out in YouTube and in the back end is just craziness that we will never get to see that is just probably mind-blowing yeah this video wasn't very funny or fun at all to do or whatever but I just I feel like it's one more aspect of Micah that we need to make sure we don't forget about so when she does make her attempt to come back like everybody th like what else are they gonna do that we're, we're, we're well well versed in the dirt that she is done and that we are we are not going to allow this to be a thing we're not going to be relentless in our pursuit of justice for h right at all times and even if i do talk about other things it doesn't mean that i'm on to the other things so there are a lot of people exploiting their kids on youtube and in, in social media world and i will not stop talking about it so on to the next one i guess but anyway like and subscribe hit the little bell so you get the notifications and i will see you tomorrow for another video hopefully if i have some time it's going to be great. I love hanging out with you. You guys are amazing. Head over to the Discord. Head over to the Patreon. Head over, do all the things. Get a t-shirt. Do all the cool stuff um, to support this channel so I can pursue this maybe in another in full-time capacity in the future. I don't know. We'll see. I love doing it. I love talking to you. You guys are amazing. And um, I read all your comments. So I might do a mailbag episode soon. And don't forget to join me Saturday night, 9-ish, 9.30-ish for Fireside Chats, where I actually answer all your questions, q and um, I'll get into that. And I play some guitar for you, a little singing. It's not very good, but I sing for you. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, and we'll see you next time.